I was asked how I make my extreme knitting charts, or otherwise known as non-reversible charts. Actually, I do it old school, and I use Microsoft Excel, and sometimes I use a cross-stitch pattern called PC Stitch 5. And basically, that's for when I want to take a picture, like, for instance, <clears throat> the Zoso uh, Led Zeppelin symbols. I found some really great little black and white pictures of them. I pulled them into PC Stitch 5, which rasterized them, pixelated them for me. And then I came over to Microsoft Excel, and I hand drew them into my templates. As you can see, mine are 45 stitches um, wide by 57 rows tall. So, when I want to do an extreme chart where there's one picture on one side and one picture on the other, I build them like this. This is the front side with the plain squares, and this is the back side with the little X's in them. Because when I combine them together, you actually end up, let me show you here, two stitches, the back side and the front side stitch that is considered one stitch on your double knitting. So the way I create these, again, old school, the way this is supposed to happen is this back side is supposed to be mirror imaged. So you're supposed to actually take it and flip it. Well, I'm not gonna draw this backwards. I have, enough, I have a hard enough time drawing it in the right direction. So all I do is I, I do an old school technology. I grab this column right here and I cut it and then I come down here right there and I paste it into place. Now that usually I'm two handing this hotkeys and a mouse at the same time. For the back side you always work this chart right to left. For the front side chart you work left to right. So. I just put the first half of my stitch in. Now I'm going to come in and grab the second half. And I'm going to pop that one into place there. And I promise you, it puts it all in place. It looks just right. Everything's kosher. And that's how I build it. So I'll just go in, I'll freehand it. I will create the pieces as I see fit, decide which ones I want to combine, if any at all. Because like this one, this is my Led Zeppelin tribute. I actually considered um, putting them on four separate. And then I thought, eh, I don't have enough room in my Geek Gan to do that. So how about I just combine them? And then that's instead of four squares, it's now two. And eh, Simple, black and white. These are going to be two color. No crazy five strands, three strands, whatever. It's all going to be the same. Um, so, yeah, that's all I do to build these. Now, if I have something that I would like to pull in, let's say, for instance, um, I have... Actually, I have a big directory of photos that I pull in every once in a while as inspiration. I will come in and I tell this, this is PC Stitch 5, it's a cross-stitch program. Um, it's actually old, uh, I think they're up to 10 or 11 at this point. I go in and I import, I browse from my file, I actually have in here tons of ideas of things to do. Um, Mass Effect logos for my daughter. In fact, one of the ones I want to do desperately is Bubbles from Trailer Park Boys. I'm having a bit of trouble with that because it doesn't really want to play with me very well because this 45 stitch wide here is very limiting. And then, yes, I maintain the aspect ratio. I let it do its thing. And then I pull it in and I, because I want this one to be a two color, simple two color, I'll put the two colors in. I let it do its thing and it doesn't quite come out the way I like it. So maybe if I bump it up to black, white, and maybe two grays, that would be four colors I can deal with. It kind of gives me a little bit something better. And then I tell it to finish. I look at that. It's hard to see, so I always pull it up to a larger one. That one's not bad. I, I might actually work with that one instead. Um, and then I'll just come over to Microsoft Excel. I bring this over. 
I do a smaller version over here. I have an actual file called template that I built a while back just to save myself some time. And uh, shoot, let me just do it this way. It'll be faster. which has all of this good information in it. It's already built. So then I can just come over here and I can figure out, okay, 10, 20, 30, 40, and three, which leaves me two to play with. So that gives me, I have three up here and three down here and I have two, two lines to work with. So four and four. And then I'll just figure out where over this starts and then I'll start building it by hand by just picking out those, go to the bucket, the, the fill bucket, and I'll choose a color, probably that black right there, and then I just start building it in. I'll follow whatever they've got here, um, which I'm not following exactly, but you'll see there's, say like five there, I'll come back over here, and there's five there, and then just fill it in. It's tedious, but once you get going, it's it, it, you'll you'll start flying it'll start going but that's basically how I do it and that's how I create my extreme charts like this Zeppelin one that I'm doing right here like that easy peasy lemon squeezy